After this, the Lord appointed 72 others. Can I go with the word appoint? Okay, just write down. I'm going to ask you just now. Write down. What does it mean to you to say, I've been appointed by God? Give me three or four keywords. Just keywords. What does it mean to be appointed by God? What does it mean to be appointed by God? What does it mean to be appointed by God? To be appointed. To be appointed. Ja. Jandra, jy moet neerskryf. Daar is hy. Appointed. What is the process of to be appointed? All right. Geef my paar woorde. Say again. Chosen. Chosen. Yes. Called. Given authority. Set apart. Purpose. To do a task. Okay. What do you actually say? Given authority. So to be appointed means something is given. Let's make it more simple. In that sense, but something is given. Somebody said purpose. Affirmation of identity. Okay. You've been appointed. So in all of that affirmation of identity, at the end of the day, there must be who's the one that is interested to do something with me. All of them are right, and I think another hundred will be right. But I want you also to write down agenda. You cannot be appointed if there's not an agenda for, for the appointment. There must be an agenda for you to be appointed. So for me to know I'm appointed, yes, I'm appointed, God has called me, yes, calling, yes, set aside for a specific yes purpose. So what is the agenda? Why did someone call you? There's an agenda that God has with you. Let's say God has an agenda with me. His agenda was to send these guys out for a certain lot of stuff to happen that he wants them to go and do, for uh, to have a certain result in those people and to have a certain result in the 72 people. Hello. So what is God's agenda with you if he appointed you to do a lot of stuff and to be a specific person, to be like this, to be like that, to be this person? What is his agenda with you for next year. I have a certain agenda, and for this agenda, I appoint that man, and that man, and that man, because I believe they will be able to fulfill that specific agenda. So you follow God's agenda, you understand your appointment, you understand why you are appointed. Hello? Because God believes you are the one that will be able to do that. Because God has faith in you. Because there's a master plan and a uniqueness of certain things that you need to fulfill that somebody else not going to fulfill. And my frustration could be if I have a certain perspective of God's call, a certain perspective of why I'm appointed in this position with this Job description with this. Hello? What is the thing that you are called for to do? Okay. They appointed them, so it is about agenda. Are you with me? A second one, I want to say attention, agenda. Attention. 
Are you met me? Attention, because God's attention is on me because of a certain agenda. He's looking at me. If I have a certain agenda, I have a certain agenda, and I want, so, I want to appoint somebody, I must put a certain focus. I must give attention to who? Patrick in Emma. I give a certain attention to him and to her. So God's eyes are on you because of a certain agenda also that he has with you. Yes, God's eyes is there because he loves you. He's there for you. He enjoys you. You're his child. He protects you. He wants to be with you. All of that. Yes, 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 yes. But certain times, certain moments, you are appointed for certain purpose. Appointed for a specific purpose. So this week, God's eyes can be on you. His attention is drawn to you for a specific purpose also. God, you are looking at me. Well, he's watching me for when I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> me. Not necessary. Many times people in Kriari think, um, you know, the past is watching because he cannot trust me or he's this or he's that. Kijk hoe smal hij maar al aan wie. It was only with your brother. Oh, because he has such a potential. What am I saying? Because an agenda is there. And when you sometimes when you see and you know God has this major agenda with this person, you look at that person because you know God has a major agenda with that man. Not, I cannot trust him, I must just watch him the whole time. What are you busy with? What are you busy with? It has to do with accountability. It has to do with discipleship. It has to do with there's such a potential in you. Olympic athlete, the coach will ask you, so what, what happened here? What happened there? What happened here? Because I cannot trust you because you are such a pathetic runner. That's what the devil come and tells the guy. Hello? He wants you to believe that because you're such a pathetic runner. Or the coach is there to serve you because you have that awesome potential. And therefore, you must go to the coach and say, Coach, you are not, you're not focusing on me. You're not focusing in, in what way? What is right? What is wrong? What must be better? What must be... Not better, but what must be better, what must be uh, whatever. Are you with me? So I need that. I need that. As you admit, my. So may God help you, may God help me. That we will understand that, that we will understand it. Appoint it, appoint it. Because there's an agenda and his attention is on me. And then the last, the third one about appointment that I just want to live out, bring forth the whatever is uh, appear. You need to appear before the king. If the king has a certain agenda and his attention is on you in the light of his agenda, you better appear before the king. You must appear before the king. And from that place, number four, accountability. I don't know if you understand, it's all a A. Ah. Ah, okay. You must appear before the king. But if I appear only, I have this agenda. I have this agenda, okay, that I got from God. Yes, he's with me. He's watching me. Now I can be in trouble. Or I can do it right. I can do it wrong. And now it's all about performance. But if I understand how to appear before him, from a place of relationship, more and more I will be able to hear his heart. Remember we said, I seek him because his thoughts, not my thoughts. His ways, not my ways. Are you with me? And so, I, we are accountable to one another. Why? Because we want to bring excellence before the Lord. We don't want excellence like the world has excellence. But because what we do, we want to do as if unto the Lord, we're keeping and holding one another accountable. If I, that demon of performance is, is all over me, it's, I'm in trouble or I'm out of trouble. I'm in trouble or I'm out of trouble. 
But if the worship passion is in me, and I say, I want to do it with excellence. I want to be proud for the privilege. I'm proud of the privilege that I have to do it for Christ. Ek is trots daarop oor die voorig wat ek het, dat ek het vir God kan doen. I'm proud of the privilege that I have to do it for God. Amen. And if that man come and criticize me, and I have the moment of truth to react, then I choose to say, I will do this for Christ. And in that decision, and in that decision, where I don't know if the devil or the Lord sent that man, but if he brought in me a decision to say, I will do this for Christ and not as if for the praise of people. I'm on the next level with God. I'm on the next level with God. Hello. I'm on the next level with God. If I could make that decision, I'm not doing this for the praise of the people. I'm doing this as if unto the Lord. Your stability, that what has eternal value, that incorruptible seed brought forth harvest. Because you embrace the incorruptible seed. When you felt it's time to take offense, it's time to be fed up, it's time, you know, and that guy has no authority to say that. He's even doing that ten times worse than me. It all depends. Do you believe you're appointed by who? But if you believe you're appointed by God, it's first of all, He has an agenda. He his attention is on you. And you need to appear before Him. Appear before Him for everything that you do. Amen. And from that place of I appear before Him, I am accountable. If I don't understand how to appear before Him, accountability will be just be about in trouble, out of trouble. In trouble, out of trouble. And I appear, hello, but if I walk before God, like God said to Abram, walk before me and you will be blameless. Now, as I know what work, can you don't Genuine. I think you something like a genuineness. Dan sal jy oprecht wees. Oprecht. Daar is een ander woord vir oprechtheid in Engels ook. Uh, nobody knows. For the other translation. Because blameless sometimes as a, a, as a type of a context as if you are not to blame, you know? But oprechtheid is to righteousness statue is gerechtigheid. Um, but okay, we will find it. But it has to do with a genuineness, just a sincere, yeah, like a sincerity, a sincerity, oprechtheid. Daar sê, but with all of that, Abram, there's an agenda, you appointed to go and offer up Isaac. You go, my brother, in next year, maybe in just in one out of a thousand situations this year, you went and you wanted to be faithful, and but you are faithful not as appear before God the whole time in what you do as if unto the Lord. But I appear to be faithful. I'm taking the mandate. I'm called to do this, and I'm doing this, and there I go up. But it's such an issue. There's such a turmoil in me. Why I must do this, and why this, and why that, and why that? What are you going to do? You're going to skill and slaughter Isaac. Because you're not walking with God in this. You're not appearing before him. So you're not in that place to be able to hear God say, Stop. Now I know that you love me, and that you will withhold nothing from me. Therefore... Therefore, don't kill Isaac. God shall provide. God shall provide. Abraham told Isaac. Hello? But too many times we've slaughtered the Isaac because we were too much in a turmoil of who don't understand how on earth after all these years and the promises of God over my life and what he said. This is not in line with what he said. I don't understand. It's impossible that this same God, that this God of love can tell me to go and kill my son. It's impossible. It's impossible. And from that place, I'm suddenly in this turmoil in my life. And you know, at the end of the day, till the day you die, 
you will not understand why you had to go and kill Isaac. But you didn't appear before God with what you do. Do it as if unto the Lord. But if you can do what you do as if unto the Lord, hello, Isaac will be there. And Isaac, these children, Jacob and all the 12, and the 12 tribes, and the nation, Israel, and through, the, through Israel as a nation, through Christ, all the nations of the earth. All of that. What could be the impact if I could stop having the issue when I don't understand the appointment? Where I decide, according to my understanding, if it's God or not God. And if God is not actually understood, it's not God. No, it's not going to be like that. Because guys, more and more and more and more in the future, things are going to become more confusing. More confusing. So if we have a little bit of a smallish little bit of a practice with one another, that's nothing against what's coming in the nations. With confusion... And then when you will decide, turn away. And Jesus said to the twelve, are you also going? Are you also going? Where will we go, Lord? You have the words. You have the words. Everybody say words. You have the words of truth. And I want to live not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Peter, the guy said, Jesus, you have the words of life. Where else? So that doesn't mean we understand the words when you say, eat my flesh and drink my blood. I mean, how on earth must they understand? That doesn't mean they understand, but they believed and they chose. And that was their conviction. You have the words of life. So you will live by a specific word next year and for your future. And according to that word, you will position your life. The guy that gets hurt in the church, and he takes that word as the word, and he formulates a theology according to his hurt and according to his disappointments. And all the words of the Bible, the, the, the word of his theology, must fit into this hurt, this experience. In a reactionary theology, reactional theology. And his theology is based on his experience, what was positive and what was negative. And according to that, the word of God must fit in, into the picture that he has. And he will try every little piece of the puzzle to try and fit it into the picture that he has about the word. And that's when our love grow cold because it cannot fit. It, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. May God have mercy on me, mercy on you. Amen. Amen. That we will understand this. Hallelujah. Who wants us not still by war, by appointed? Yeah, but he is the word. Yeah, but under the word heading appointment we have, first one was agenda, then. Attention, then, appear, and accountability. So I will be accountable to him. So if your boss there at university, or if your boss there at the school there, or if your boss in Creari, not me, I mean maybe Emil and Adam and Peter, is not nice, you know, then <laughs> you will do what you do as if unto the Lord. Because God is a jealous God to say, will you do this for me or for who? So if God wants your attention in his agenda, in his agenda he wants your attention, he must make sure that you do it for him and not for the people. Therefore he could organize a situation that all things will work for the good. And he will believe, he believes that everything will work for the good. Not first of all for Adam to change. But for you to give God all the attention, all the focus. Yeah, he also, me also, all of us. Must change, yes. But are you with me? 
And God wants to bring us, my brother, my sister, as a ministry, guys internationally, nationally. God wants to bring us to be that type of quality people that we will be a type of a certain people. We will have a certain level of maturity among us that we realize there's no time for petty. Are you with me? Because God is serious about what must happen in the nations. God has an agenda with us as a group for continents to be set alight. And we need to get into that place to understand how it must happen. And how it will happen, yes, it will happen even through a lot of guys already being sent out to fulfill that prophecy. Hello? Are you with me? Reinhard Patricius, he is sent out next year to a church there. But may he have that impact in Jesus' name. According to the prophetic word that was given over the ministry here. He will not go in in the name of the ministry. He must go in the name of the Lord. Hello? God must get the glory. Not him, not us. God must get the glory. Hello? Are you with me? But it all depends. With whose word will you go? God has sent forth his word that the nations will be impacted. That the nations will come before God through our ministry. That means before through you and through me. Through your life, through my life, it will be. Why? Where you are sent is because God wants to go there. He sent them forth to every place where he wanted to go. Where he wanted to go. So what you do, you must find a pattern in what you do to duplicate it in others. When you do the finances, you do the finances so that you find a pattern. Your vision is to find patterns for the churches and for ministries and Bible schools to understand how to deal accurately with finances. How to prepare a field. and How to do intercession. It must become a testimony somewhere in a, in a syllabi about intercession and about faith for premises. What? It must become like a pattern, your testimony, for others to be encouraged by. In the way that how you take out the weeds. Everything can become a pattern if you go for the quality. Let's say I will go for the quality. And it will become a pattern that I can give others to live by. They will be set free by the pattern that I established through my life. Amen. You are appointed, my brother, my sister, you are appointed. Because he has an agenda. He has an agenda. Lastly, agenda. He's giving you. Second one. Attention. Thirdly, for you to appear before him and give him then also the attention and then to be accountable. Because people, in shame and performance, they give this type of attention. But when I respect and I worship and I use my everything, I give attention like that. Are you with me? Look into who he is. Look into who he is, my brother, my sister. And then your accountability is not one hell of a slip. Amen. It becomes an honor. Okay. Good. Was was now. Appointed 72 others, sent them two by two ahead. The next question is who's your partners? Partners. Partners. They must be always partners. I'm not talking, first of all, just your wife and your husband. I'm talking about partners. Now we there's a scripture, partners in crime. No, Irene. Or is it in scripture? Well, it's in scripture. Okay. It's not a scripture. Partners in crime. Now partners in Christ. Rather, let's go for everybody, partners in Christ. Not partners in crime. Okay. May God help us when we share our hearts with one another. Yeah. That we are not in the crime. And the crime has to do with stealing. 
Hello? Taking illegal. So illegally, some rubbish can come and live in you, but you allow that. Illegally, certain things can come into the place that belongs to Christ. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your life belongs to Christ. Amen? So illegally, those rubbish can come in. And the, and the thing is, how can we entertain these illegal, whatever we want to call it, guys, they just come in. This hojas. This gesta. Familiar spirits. Demonic things. Familiar spirits because they are familiar with you and you are familiar with them. You are at peace with one another. You can chill out with one another. You can chill with this thing. That's why it's a familiar spirit. He's familiar with you. He's at peace with you. That chocha, and you are at peace with that chocha in your life. No, that chocha cannot be in your life anymore. Not next year anymore. Uh-uh. You will be in the family, and you will be familiar with the Word. You'll be familiar with the Spirit of God. You will be familiar in the context of family. Not familiar in the context of cheeky and naughty and, and uh, arrogant. No, no, no. But you understand? You with me? I know this is a very familiar time to, to draw us off. Who loves it now? I'm brav in. Nikki, ons can half in, must eat. No. You all have your own food, hey. Mjoinki? 50 minutes, okay. You can stand in the row so long and pray in tanks. Okay. Bottom line. Ons gaan amper nou vir a landing hier so gaan. Okay, appointed. Appointed. And he sent them two by two ahead of him. Two by two. We need one another. It is Matthew 18. Where two or more agree, it will come to pass. Where two or more agree, it will come to pass. Where two are gathered in my name, I am there. So God is about the family. It's about the family. It's about the family. And you say, he doesn't want you to do it on your own. You must do it with him, but you must do it also with the Christ in the brother that he sends with you. As you met me, and sometimes he's sending somebody with you. Yeah. He's summoning somebody with you to irritate your flesh. So that when you get into that place, the flesh has <clears throat> been dealt with. When you face your Goliath, there's some flesh that has been dealt with. He's sending Joseph to the brothers that are going to do what? Pray for him and send him forth to Egypt. That's the other version. Of what actually happened. <clears throat> Are you with me? To be sent forth there. To serve. And where you serve, your gifts make room for you. Yes, so that you go in the house of Potiphar. And in the house of that man. So that your faithfulness will be rewarded with jail. When you were faithful to God. You know? And ran from the lady then God in his love rewarded you. Because when you're faithful, you will be rewarded. Not true? And he rewarded him with jail. Hallelujah. But all oh, for that, just that one moment when he stepped into the throne room, into the palace, from the jail to the palace, he had the same stature. The stature in jail was the stature that he had in palace. And from that Stature, palace bowed down, acknowledged the stature and said, nobody in this palace has the wisdom that you have. We submit as the palace, we submit to your wisdom. Where does it come from? From God. But he did it all through all these, these ways. Ah, hello. So, but sometimes in the past, not anymore, we would think, okay, there's somebody, and we're going to have an outreach. That means we are going now into the palace. You know, in the outreach, there's longer periods and certain phases that we will go through. We will even interpret dreams there in jail. Um, hello? Uh, shall I meet me? Where you go, you are faithful in the small things. That small thing. 
later you'll realize it wasn't a small thing. Is it me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's going to help us. Okay, send them two by two ahead of him. Ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Where he was about to go. And lastly, I just want to say, what's your expectation? What is your expectation? The last point for this, what is your expectation? Oh, hallelujah. God is coming. He wants to do something. I don't know what he wants to do. But sometimes he wants to show me what he wants to do. But many times, he didn't say, he sent them out and tell, told them, this is what I want to do in that town. Tell them, I want to do this and this and this and this and this and this. This is my agenda. When I get there, yes, there's a lot of stuff. We will talk about that later, what he told them. But he didn't give them his full agenda of what he's going to come and do in their town. So many times you will not know what God's going to do next year. It's okay. As long as you know you're going in faithfulness ahead with a focus on him, his attention is on you, your attention is on him, you will appear before him, he has an agenda with you, you'll be faithful, you will get into his word, his thoughts will be your thoughts, his ways will become your ways, because you will seek him, you will be with him, hello, and he will be faithful, the rain will come down, but are you going to work with his word, not with the word of the enemy, not the word of destruction from hell. You will work with the word from heaven, not the word from hell. With one of those two words, you will work. But there will be less destruction in my life. There will be less fight in my life. Why? Because I'm going to work more with the word from God. With the word from God. Amen. So when I, I must work with the word from God, and I know God said, Go with your leaders. And the pastor tells me after the first year of Kriari, I want you to start cell groups. My response to him, you, you are killing me. I have no time. I'm giving class 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock every day and even on Saturdays. And you want me to start cell groups. That's what I said. I, I, don't, I don't have time and you are killing me. And then it came to me. But because God said, I'm with you, I will do it, but I cannot see. I cannot see how it must happen. But I'm walking with this man. And when I did it, at the end of the year, at the end function with Kriari, I said, if it wasn't for the cell groups, the school would have just, oh. Because with the perspective and a lot of subjects, things opened up, but it was supposed to be Handled. People had to be ministered to. People had to be walked the road with. Are you with me? And it, so it started with a vision. And my words, you're going to kill me. Hello? It wasn't my vision. But then that's how the family, how the cell group started as a net underneath Kriari. The school. But, so in many ways, my brother, my sister, if you just going to see everything in the future and you're going to be excited and everything's going to make sense. Somewhere you are deceived. Because God will challenge you with things that you will not understand at that moment. Then he's in the business with you because he loves it when you must walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by sight is walk by understanding. I understand. It makes sense. Walk by faith, it doesn't make sense. A lot of stuff doesn't make sense, then it is called walk by faith. And just because you believe in him, because you believe in his character, you have faith in his character, you have faith in who he is, therefore you do it. Not because you understand. And God is pleased when you are motivated by who he is. Motivated by who he is. And you do that because of who he is. Not because you understand his strategy. Please, my brother and my sister, that's prophetic. For the future. And that's what we pray for the churches. That's what we pray for the past. That's what you pray for people. When they don't understand. Here we have the job. Here we have the business. 
We built it for 30 years in the name of Christ. We gave our lives. We were faithful in everything, even in tithing and offering and everything. And just next moment, Corona and everything crashes and we have nothing. Out of work, out of everything. Pastors in churches, and the church just disappear. It's just gone. Now that pastor, after 30 years, must go and find a job. He never learned a different skill. He was just full out, gave himself 100% in ministry. Where is God? Where is his love? Where does all these things make sense? You walk by faith because God appointed you. His attention is on you. His agenda is there. Be accountable to him. Appear, appear, appear before him. Before you appear, before your situation, before your circumstances, before people that you need to face certain things with. Before you appear there, appear before him. Okay, I want you to write down. Just write down four or five things. What you believe. God has appointed you to do what? And in what are those facets? Will you appear before God because his attention is on you for that to happen? Your father's going to look at you with an agenda for the following five things to happen next year. What is it? Ask Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. We take five minutes and then we finished.